So we're just outside Dungan in County Tyrone to check out a brand new slatted sheep unit on the farm of Sam and Stephen Thompson. Of course, the Agriland team is adhering to all social distancing and health guidelines. There's absolutely no close contact with our guests. So let's go and take a look. Sam Thompson and I farm here with uh, my son Stephen Thompson and uh, uh, we're new mills just uh, outside Dungannon. Uh, I'm retired, I work for 40 years as a senior advisor in the Department of Agriculture and after I retired I did some work with my son Stephen who's now farming here. Uh, Stephen was in, a, was in business and about four years ago or so he sold his business and he's now uh, farming full time. Just tell me, I suppose, the, the farm system in place here. Yeah, well, we, uh, we own around 40 acres right. and uh, we take in the region of 80 acres and most of that 80 acres has just been taken for the first time this year since Stephen came back to full time farm. Yes. Uh, we have 300 breeding ewes, 80 uh, cattle, uh, some of them are close to finishing uh, beef cattle and others are stores for uh, summer grazing. And then can you talk to me well about the breed of the oats here? Yeah, the oats, uh, when I, I started off I had mostly Suffolk Cheviot uh, oats. I was probably too good to them and uh, I wasn't pleased with the lambing percentage. We were getting, selling maybe 1.2, 1.3 lambs which was pretty low. Yeah. Uh, I, we decided, I'm a member of the uh, business development group, the sheep, the local Dungannon business development group, and uh, just having a look around and seeing what was going on there, we have changed our policy to buying uh, uh, mules really, right. either hoggets or yo lambs, and we keep about 40, 45 uh, mules, and from those we breed our Texel mules, and Suffolk mules right. and then we cross those with either uh, Texel, Charlie or Suffolk rams to produce the uh, butcher's lamb. Yeah. And you had a good scan so this year? We scanned there at the end of uh, the year and uh, the yews, there were 230 yews scanned at 1.84 yes. which, includes, uh, which included 12 empties so we were quite pleased with that. We had uh, we also scanned 70 ewe lambs, which are hoggets now, and uh, they scanned at uh, 1.2. And then talk to me, Sam, um, we're in the new shed here for, for your flock. Yeah, well, this is completely new development. Uh, it, it's, uh, prior to this, we had the ewes housed on straw bedding down at my other son's farm at uh, Mark's house, and uh, last season we had probably uh, about 200 yews in a house which should only accommodate maybe 140 or 150 right. so there were problems and it was difficult during lambing and so on and so forth yeah. and Stephen had always this project in mind and uh, the work was started about this time last year January 2020 started with the tank obviously shuttering the tank yeah. and uh, initially we thought about a shallow tank maybe three uh, about a metre deep or so, right. but then uh, having talked to the shuttering guys and so on and so forth, we decided just to go with the full uh, two and a half metre tank. And Sam, why slats and not drive it? Well, again, we had experience with straw yeah. and uh, it, it, straw is very expensive and again, it's, 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 especially if the silage is a bit now, we're, we usually try to make a hydri matter silage, right. but if the silage is a bit wet, it's nearly impossible to keep them clean in the way we would like to keep them mm. on straw bedding. So we just certainly decided to go for slats in this building. And did you have a design in mind before you ever thought about it? Yeah, we, we, our main, we went up and had a look through the business development group. We had a look at the green mount up at Glen Wherry yeah. and got a number of ideas from there. Uh, also, uh, a number of uh, f farms we visited prior to the shutdown, we visited a number of farms with the business development group 
and a lot of the farms had various housing systems and uh, we got ideas for, from them. Mm. Uh, some of them weren't as big as this project but they still had some really good ideas which we hopefully have incorporated into this building. Sam, can you just tell me uh, who designed the shed for you? Yep. Well, the, the, the design was undertaken by Niall Hudson right. and uh, he designed the pens and uh, really did a good job and uh, you know I, I don't think there's anything really that we would change about the yeah. the, the, the building uh, which is not always the case when you put up a new building now having said that we've only used it for a month so maybe by the time we get through yeah. the whole lambing experience we may say we should have done something different but yeah. so far uh, we're very happy with the design and, and credit to Niall and also credit to the local uh, beef and sheep advisor Brian Hanthorn right. who, who gave us some advice as well on the uh, layout of the pens and so on and so forth. Ten pens in total and they're all sort of uh, interchangeable, they're sliding gates yeah. between each pen and we can move yos from one to the other. Uh, the the steel work was done by OB Engineering which is a local engineering company yeah. and the main builder uh, was a guy Johnny Quinn from between uh, Pomeroy and Dungannon and he, he has done a, an excellent first class job really. Uh, the, we started off feeding with round bales and uh, they should have been a bit uh, chopped a bit more and we found that the yews were sort of silage in over the slats yeah. which was a, a problem. So uh, we then, uh, Stephen bought a, a tub feeder and it has certainly improved uh, and it has helped to chop the silage a bit more. Yeah. And again, because we have restricted feeding face, we need to use the tub feeder really right. make, so that the, the meal is mixed with the silage. Yeah. Uh, if we hadn't uh, the tub feeder, we would end up hanging a lot of feeders inside the pens right. and that's not handy when it comes to feeding. And it's a fine white shed uh, Sam which means you can incorporate uh, lamb pins as well. We designed the shed so that uh, we could use the diet feeder and could also incorporate the lambing pens within the shed. Yeah. Uh, we have 32 lambing pens one and a half meters square. We, at the minute we're in the process of setting up uh, a, a drinking system yeah. with a four inch 100 millimeter uh, PVC piping and a water supply uh, that way. I suppose a big thing as well, uh, Sam, when you're talking about this many years, is ventilation as well. It's a, it's a big thing too. The ventilation, uh, we have uh, space boarding down both sides, mm. uh, about two metres, and it's, it's two layers. Mm. Because, because of the, the lambing pens where they're located, we thought with one layer of space boarding, especially if the wind or rain or yeah. whatever coming in, yeah. uh, there's a chance of the lambing pens getting wet. So the two layers of space boarding hopefully will uh, prevent any Avoid snow or rain coming in. The ridge is a, an open ridge, but it's designed uh, to uh, prevent uh, any vermin or uh, crows or anything coming mm. in. So hopefully with uh, the, the ventilation should be fine. You know, it's a building that will be here hopefully and uh, whether I'll be farming it or not but there'll be Stephen will be time. farming or Stephen's boys farming in 20 years time.